You may be seated. The church said amen. What a Savior. Thank you so much, Garmin, the praise. What an incredible way to set the stage for the message here tonight and all the other things that happened here tonight. I also want to take a moment and greet those who are watching online. Good evening in the name of Jesus. I know there was quite a few watching last night, and uh, so we, uh, we welcome you uh, here this evening. And tonight, as you know, as I was going to sleep last night and waking up this morning, and I just kept, I, I kept hearing some of the, the ring from last night. I heard a lot last night as we were praying, in the name of Jesus. I heard that a lot, in the name of Jesus. As I was waking up this morning and that phrase was continually coming and I was saying, Lord, what do I do with it? Is this something that you have for tonight? As I began to meditate and pray more and that seemed to be coming, then my phone started ringing and I was on the phone most of the morning. And, but in that process, I, one of my co-workers sent me a video of a song. And in my heart, as that came in, that message came in, it was like I was processing the power of the name Jesus. And what makes that name so special? What makes that name so powerful? And then the song that was sent to me, the, the, the title of the song was, I Speak Jesus. And I said, whew, man, I get goosebumps. What do you call them? Glory bumps, whatever you want to call those. And I listened to the song. I don't know that I ever listened to it before. But I listened to the song, and it was like the confirmation that, Lord, tonight this is what you want to share with us. I would like for us just to take a moment as we begin this message and just listen to the song. Just listen to the words of the song. This is partially describing who this name Jesus and what he can do, who he is. And I believe what he wants to do tonight. Just listen. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Let him minister to our hearts. Over every heart and every mind. Yes, we speak that name, O oh God. Because I know there is peace within your presence. Oh, in your presence I there is peace. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Yes. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Think about it tonight. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Cause your name is power. Your name is healing. Yes, that's who he is. Your name is life. Break every strong. Yes, break it, Lord. The shadows, burn like the fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. Oh, yes, Lord. To every He's soul got it all. Speak it. We speak that name. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Yes, He gives us life. He brings healing to our hearts. Speak the holy name. Yes. 
Jesus. Yes, Lord. Shout Jesus from the mount. Yes, from the mount. Jesus in the, in street. the streets. Jesus in the dark. In the darkness. For every enemy. Oh yes, Lord. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. And Jesus in the streets. Yes, Lord. And Jesus in the darkness. Touch our hearts, oh God. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, we speak your name. We declare it out into the world. Jesus. Oh, it's powerful. It's healing. Brings life. Brings every stronghold. Jesus. In the darkness, Jesus burns like a fire. Your name is power, anointing, grace, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Brings it to us. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, I Lord. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Thank Over you, Lord. Every heart and every mind. Jesus. Because I know there is peace within his presence. Peace in his I presence. Speak Jesus. We speak that name tonight. We speak that name tonight. Father, we want to declare that name tonight. We want from this place, O oh God, to, that that name would be heard all over. Lord, in every county, in this county and surrounding counties and surrounding states and, friend, the entire United States, the entire world, as we speak this precious name, that name that is above every name, someday we're going to bow before him. So tonight we want to declare that name Jesus. We want to speak that name Jesus. We want to speak that name Jesus. Jesus. So we bless you and we honor you in the name of Jesus. And everyone said amen and amen. Isn't it a wonderful, powerful name? You know, the Bible says in uh, Philippians chapter 2, let me see if I can get this to go. Somehow give me uh, control to my clicker there if you could. Maybe I'm not turned. Yes, here we go. That USB plugged in back there? All right. Well, you can do it for me. There we go. All right. The reason that this name is so powerful is Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So when you hear your name, your, your name was given to you, and so it is an identification of who you are. So I, I greet this brother, and I say, Brother Aaron or Brother Daniel. And so, so there's something about when we greet each other by name. What I really enjoy doing is going from prison to prison, and, and maybe you don't see an inmate for two years, and you come back to that prison or another prison, and you meet him, and you greet him by name. There's something that happens when, you know, there's something special about addressing someone by their name. It makes you uh, feel good. It makes you feel important or whatever all it does. But there's something significant about it. Now, why is the name Jesus a name given that is above every other name? Why is that? 
Well, let's look into the Word of God. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, if you go there. Verse 6 and verse 7. And I want to set this stage so that I even understand better why the name Jesus is given and that it is given as a name above every other name, the name Jesus Christ. Let's read in Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Let's pause there for just a moment. Is this not why the name Jesus is given above every other name? It says, for unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. It's talking about the same person, is it not? And the reason this name is above every other name, the reason that a, 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 a child came to being is because the child was born. The, notice that the son was not born. The son was given. So that tells me that the son pre-existed. So, so he always was. In other words, he, Jesus, is the son of man because he was born as a child, and he's the son of God because a son was given. That's what makes this name above every other name. Yes! It is a name worthy to be declared into the spirit world because when I speak that name, there's something that happens in my heart and in the atmosphere around us because there is a supernatural power in that name. Now look at the next thing in this verse. And the government shall be upon his shoulders the Son of God and the Son of Man, the government shall be upon his shoulders. This is a Old Testament statement that came almost came to being almost 700 years later. But as I look at the Son of Man, and the Son of God. When Jesus was born, I guess you could call it, I heard this, this is not original with me, I heard it from someone else, deity in diapers. Deity in diapers. And when you look at the Son of Man being born, the Son of God who always was, that means He is everything, He can identify with everything you and I ever face, and the government shall be upon His shoulders. Now, what is a government? Good question. What is a government? I, this is one of the definitions. A government is a system designed to look after the well-being of its citizens. That's a government. A system designed to look after the well-being of its citizens. Now, just because it's called government... <laughs> doesn't mean it's an automatic that a government will take care of its citizens, but the definition of government is that it's designed as a system to take care of its citizens. Now you take that in light of Jesus. What does it say? The government shall be upon his shoulders. So now I trust I'm talking to the church tonight. Those who have received Christ who are born again, there may be some here who are not, but you can begin that relationship tonight. But as a child of God, the weight, the government is on his shoulders. Therefore, that means he is caring for his children, for his citizens. And so he carries the weight that we so often carry. And we're not meant to carry that weight because the government is upon his shoulders. He carries it. Now look at the next phrase. And he, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Now, what do you do when you go to a counselor? Another word for counselor could be maybe an advisor or Somebody that helps you discern what's going on in your life or maybe even helps clarify uh, where, uh, where 
maybe some of the next steps, or you ask a counselor for advice, or a counselor will give you advice. Now, look at the name Jesus. He shall not only be called Counselor, but Wonderful Counselor. Now, wouldn't you want someone like that to be your counselor? One who is the Son of God and the Son of Man? Now, I've got to be careful what I say here tonight because Steve Stutzman's sitting back here. and uh, you, you consider yourself a counselor? Oh, you don't. Well, now, now I'm saved. No. But God has gifted him in, in and I have good friends who are, who, who are counselors, and, and, and great. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not against a counselor. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is sometimes we're so quick to run to other people, whether they're counselors or not, we're so quick with our weight to run to other people when Jesus just wants us to come to him and recognize, I am your mighty counselor. I am the mighty one. I am the son of man. I am the son of God. I am everything that you need. The mighty counselor. And if that is in the heart of a counselor here on earth, that's where he's going to get his wisdom from in order to give us advice what the next step is. If a counselor gets their wisdom from any other source, woe unto us, because here's also what happens. And it exists in the world. In fact, I'm afraid it exists in the church. People run to fortune telling. They look at your hands and they try to, all those kind of demonic stuff that people dabble in because they want to have answers for their life. I encourage us tonight, put your faith and trust in the one who is carrying your weight. The government is upon his shoulders. That is a name worth declaring into the spirit world. And that's why his name is above every other name. To the glory of God. The mighty God the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And may I say tonight, you'll never run out with him. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Yes! There shall be no end with the name Jesus, the mighty Counselor. There is no end. There's always an abundance of supply. And there is no end. Um, Psalm 73, verse 24, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Uh, in Psalm 32, verse 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. And then, Colossians 2, verse 2 and 3, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom, look at this, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Yes, the mighty counselor, the government is on his shoulders. All the weight that we carry unnecessarily. He's got it all. Why in the world am I carrying it? Why in the world am I carrying it? I don't know where you find yourself tonight. You may be here. You know, I, I think of a man. This was, oh, many years ago, maybe about 14 years ago or so. I remember a man. We were having tent meetings, and, and I, th there was this young man who, who God was just drawing him. He was speaking to him, and, and, and one night I met with him before the service. He had a ball game to play that night, and, and he, wanted to, he wanted to talk. And I remember um, sitting there, and and, and, and just, just hearing his heart, and, and, and there he was wrestling. You know, he had all this weight on him. He had all this burden on him, and just like, like, like yeah, but if I, if, if I surrender, if I, if I trust Jesus, then I can't do this, and then I, 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 I can't do that. I remember encouraging him. I don't remember it verbatim, but I remember encouraging him, friend, let's not look at what we're giving up. Let's look at what we're gaining. When we give our weight to the mighty counselor, Jesus, we gain a whole lot more than we're ever giving up. In fact, Jesus has given up everything for us. But I'm glad to tell you that several nights later, I'll never forget, he was sitting about three-fourths of the way back, right down the center aisle, right out on the edge. And it, it was one of those where he was not slouched back in his chair. 
You know, he wasn't sitting there like with his feet propped up and like, oh, I can't wait till this service is over. But he was sitting there like this. I thought for sure he's going to jump up and just come up and grab me somewhere along the line. But he was sitting there, and I remember as I had people stand and went into the invitation, and I, when I give an invitation, you know, the Lord, I don't watch who's coming right at the start. You know, I'm just, I'm down here praying, and Lord, it's, it's your invitation. It's not mine, and I wasn't looking. I wasn't watching what was happening, and after a while, um, I opened my eyes, and I just looked out, and I looked back. The first place I looked at was out at that, at that chair, and the chair was empty. And I thought, oh, I thought maybe he did what another man did at those same meetings one night. An usher came to me after the service, and he said, you see that man running away from the Lord tonight? I said, no, what, what are you talking about? He said, well, when the altar call was given, I, uh, there's this young man who got up. He was under such conviction. He, he went out the back of the tent, and as soon as he was outside, he ran to his vehicle and got out of there. I thought maybe he did that. But I encouraged that usher. I said, you know, he really didn't run away from the Lord. He only ran away from the tent. Because the Lord's drawing him. The Lord was drawing him. But I thought maybe that man did the same thing. But, but then, then I started looking. I walked kind of up here because the benches were a little bit closer. Right there, right, right about there was that yellow shirt. He was wearing a yellow shirt that night. Right there he was kneeling and giving his life to Jesus Christ. Afterwards, behind the, uh, behind the stage here, behind the curtain, he just, he just came up and just like, sorry, I'm all sweaty. I don't know if I want to do it. Yeah, I'll do it. It's Jesus sweat. You're kind of sweaty too. But, but I just remember, I just remember he just, he just laid into me and just hung on. And he said, Whew. it's like a ton of bricks just left me. The government shall be on his shoulders. That night, that young man released his weight from here and let Jesus govern his life. Let Jesus govern his life. That same crusade, evening number 19, a father and a daughter right down the center aisle. That daughter was so touched. She was 15 or 16 years old. That daughter was so touched that night she couldn't hardly walk up here by herself. Her father literally carried her up to the altar. She was so broken. And that night, she exchanged her weight and let Jesus be the governor of her life, gave her life to Jesus Christ. Today, as I was meditating on this, I was reflecting back at my own life, and I said, Lord, why did I wait so long? Why did I wait so long to trust you, to give my weight? Why did I wait so long? I was 22 years old, and I gave my life to Christ, and I'm not here basking in my past. I so appreciate it. it was one of the Garment of Praise guys about not only does Jesus save us, but he takes the shame away. The shame, the guilt, all the mistakes we've made, he took it upon himself. Took it upon his shoulders. I, what a Savior! Jesus! He took it away. The guilt, the shame, the past. And that song, when, you know, the, the stuff that we brushed under the carpet is now under his blood. Yes! Yes! The shame is gone. The, but somehow we want to just carry that weight. We're not meant to carry it. Tonight at the invitation, give the weight. Let him govern our life. Who better? The mighty counselor, the one who gave his life, the Son of God, and the Son of Man, everything. He's it. Jesus. We're going to look at a man in just a moment who did that in Scripture. Whew. Take a load off of someone. You know, last night I was thinking today, my, after most of you were gone, and my wife came walking down the island. I mean, she was... I don't know why she carried half of our contents from the bus in here, but it wasn't quite that bad. But she had a whole load of stuff on her arms, you know. And she was like, honey, can you help me carry something out? And then she put it down, and we were chatting with somebody for a bit. And, but realizing that after we picked it up again, I took half of the stuff, and I had a pretty good load. Simple illustration, but carrying someone else's weight. Look at the relief. That brought to her. Jesus. Jesus! 
carries all our weights, all our disappointments, all our depressions, all our anxieties, our fears. What do I need him to govern in my life tonight? Uh, go, if you will, to uh, Mark chapter 10. We want to conclude there tonight. Mark chapter 10, in verse 46, we want to look at a man who um, broke through and let Jesus govern his life. It says in verse 46, they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. He sat by the highway side begging. And then when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still, commanded him to be called. They called the blind man, saying unto him, be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, he rose, and he came to Jesus. Verse 51, and Jesus answered and said unto him, what, what will thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight, and he followed Jesus in the way. The power of the name Jesus. There's so much we can get out of that passage, but the point I want to, the, the part I want to get out of this passage tonight is this. This man had a physical condition. That was his condition. But what did he do with his condition? This was a weight. Something in his life that he wished wouldn't be there. Something I'm dealing with that I wish somehow God would just intervene and God would do something. So here's his steps, and may we learn from this here tonight. It says that when he, verse 47, when he heard, uh, so, so uh, it's, a, it's a blind man, Bartimaeus, a son of Timaeus, he sat by the highway side, he was begging. So in verse 46, we have the picture that he was a blind beggar. So this blind beggar, he hears that Jesus of Nazareth has come to town. He heard the noise and he heard that it was Jesus. He began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now, I don't believe it was just this half-heartedness. You know this, uh, Jesus, I hope you're out there. Are you there, Jesus? I don't picture something like that. But rather, I believe this man said, Jesus! And the reason we say that is because of what happened next. When he did it the first time, the people around him, many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. You know, we make a big deal about a lot of stuff. We make a big deal about a lot of things. But tonight, I believe we need to make a big deal about Jesus! Because it is a name above every other name. And someday we're going to bow before him. We're going to bow before him. Why not do it before it's too late? Amen. Many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried to more, a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. Isn't that some? He got Jesus to stand still on his behalf. Believe we can do that today? By the same principle as he did. Jesus! Then what happened? And he, casting away his garment, he rose and he came to Jesus. Jesus asked him what he should do. Oh, that I might receive my sight. Go that way. Thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received this sight. I'm focusing tonight on speaking the name Jesus. Um, the power of that name. Some years ago, Brother Aaron, over in Kenya, Africa, remember out in a village preaching the gospel, very primitive stage and people all spread out out on the streets and didn't have a captive audience like tonight. Some on their bicycles, some sitting in the dirt, others way out. You know how it is in those places. All of a sudden, way down to my right, about from here out to the road, I looked down and I saw an older gentleman that was walking toward the stage, and as he got closer, I noticed that 
He wasn't walking straight. Not unusual to see drunk people there. The crusade, villages. But he wasn't walking straight. And I tried not to let it distract me, but he kept coming closer and closer. And wouldn't you believe all of a sudden he was right here, right there. Have you ever preached and you got kind of irked? That night, it was just like, I didn't say it, but in my heart I was like, you turkey. Like the nerve. That, that's what I was wrestling with, within. I know none of you would get that carnal, but I, it was like, Lord, what do I do with this? And I was just in my heart praying, and the Lord spoke to my heart and said, well, just use him as an illustration. How do I do that? What do I say? Oh. And the Lord just gave it to me. And I said, hey, everybody. They weren't listening to me anyway. They were all watching him. So I said, hey, everybody, everybody out there, look at this man. Look at him. We can all tell that he had too much to drink, right? But friend, I'm here to tell you tonight that I'm talking about the one that if this man would embrace Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he would empower him not to drink and fulfill the void that is in his heart. The spirit in that man didn't like that. So he starts walking away. And I still cannot explain how all this happened, but it happened. All of a sudden, he was about, I don't know, 10 feet from me, kind of like catty corner over there. And I was preaching away. And just all of a sudden, just the words came right out of my mouth. Jesus! Just like that. The moment that word was spoken, this man stopped. Yes! There is power in that name. It wasn't because I said it. It was because the power that the name carries. When we speak that name in this time that we're living in, when we pray, last night we prayed against confusion, against control. Confusion, control, and fear. We specifically prayed against it. Tonight was a continuation. Another way to pray and find victory is declaring the name Jesus. Speak it. Speak it. I kept preaching, and this man kept walking away. Another 10 feet or so, the Lord did it again. I just, Jesus! About three or four times, every time that word and name was spoken into the atmosphere, that man stopped. And he didn't just like, like, he was walking like this, and he didn't just like slowly stop. It was like, and he turned around and he looked. And I caught on what God was doing. Now, I wish I could tell you that when the altar call was given that night, that he responded and came and gave his life to Christ. Before long, he vanished into the streets. I never saw that man, but I do know this. He will never forget that night. And I hope and pray that he will receive Christ before he dies. But he will never forget that night, whether he received Christ or not. He will never forget that night because he heard the name Jesus spoken into the atmosphere. This man, blind Bartimaeus, he made a big deal about Jesus. He spoke it. He cried out the second, deal, uh, the, the second time, the more a great deal. Thou son of David... Have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. As we close tonight. As we allow Jesus to govern our life. He not only keeps us from getting into a hole. But if we find ourselves in a hole tonight. He also brings us out of that hole. He brings us out. And as I was meditating this afternoon, saying, Lord, how do you want to close here tonight? I want to ask this question to all of us. What do I need in my life tonight? What do I need in my life right now? That I want to say, Jesus, I want you to govern this area of my life. It could be some here tonight, you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior. You're not saved, not born again. 
But tonight, let's not wait any longer because tomorrow we may not have an opportunity. If the Holy Spirit is drawing you, only if the Holy Spirit is drawing you. Tonight, some may need to come for salvation. Say, Jesus, I want you to govern my life because you carried, you're going to carry my weight. Some may need salvation. Others may need to be delivered from fear and depression. Jesus, I want you to govern where I don't deal with this fear and depression, suicidal thoughts, maybe healings, decisions I need to make, tough choices I need to make, peer pressures, friendships, things that keep us from going to the next level. So what do I need Jesus to govern in my life right now, tonight? Right now, tonight. The invitation is going to be this. Jesus, I want you to govern this area of my life. Whether it's salvation, whether it's any other need, whether it's for fear, depression, anxiety, friendships, things in my life, strongholds of bitterness and anger and hatred or idols of where I spent my time or too busy here, too busy there. Lord, I want you to govern my life because the government is on his shoulders. He wants to. And you know the glorious thing about it is he wants to govern, govern every area of our life and expects nothing in return for himself. A lot of times when I want to do something for somebody, I want something in return. Jesus he laid down his life completely. He's not at, the only thing he wants is us to lay down our life. He doesn't want anything for himself because he gave himself for us to carry all our weights. Relationships, church issues. What do I want Jesus to govern in my life tonight? Can we stand together? Thank you, Jesus.